So, Nimisha, may I ask you to come on stage? So, I hand over to you the microphone. I will set up your slides here. So, Nimisha is our UX hero at Nextcloud. And she's, One yes, we cannot, <laughs> absolutely. So, and she's going to talk how to make Nextcloud more intuitive, useful, and fun by contributing to design. Full disclosure, I also have like way too many slides. So, uh, uh, where's Pedro? You are you. my biggest inspiration in how to do like a lightning, lightning talk. <laughs> there we go. go so, I, don't, I hope I don't get kicked out of the conference. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, hi everyone. So uh, my name is Nimisha, and I am the. Um, I work as a UX designer at Nextcloud, and I also is this playing by itself? <laughs> uh, well, okay, okay. Oh my God, spoilers. <laughs> but okay, okay. Keep at it, is nice. So let's start over. Please restart the timer because this is so stressful. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm Namisha. I work as a UX designer at Nextcloud, and I also started off as a contributor. And it was a very enthusiastic contributor at that because when I started contributing, I was still in college and I hung out in every single design call because I didn't want to do my assignments. But uh, clearly I enjoyed contributing to design because uh, I work here now. So um, <laughs> when I first started contributing, I thought that you know open source was just about you know coding and programming and coding and programming, but turns out there's way more, as we discussed in the panel yesterday. Uh, if you haven't watched it, please go watch it again. Um, uh, you can you know, write documentation, you can also do translations, you can you know, organize events like Greta did, you can write blogs, there's so much. And since I worked on design, let me show you a little bit about how you can maybe contribute to design. So let's start small. If uh, you see any little paper cuts or design glitches, like the alignment is off, we get that a lot. We also point that out a lot. So that'll be really helpful if you guys also point out that the alignment is off sometimes. Uh, you can just open a little issue about it you know, with maybe a screenshot. It doesn't have to be super complicated. Just opening an issue about it can really help get the problem fixed. And these are small improvements that have a huge impact when fixed. Um, also, feel free to include a mock-up of maybe what the solution could look like. Uh, feel free to go in different directions. These are all the different directions we went in with the new design before we decided on the last one. And that can help you know, get some more opinions on what's the nicest looking one. Uh, speaking of mock-ups, actually, when you're developing a new feature, usability studies can be super useful because and repeat after me, some things that's obvious to you may not be obvious to everyone else. And that's something you really need to understand when you're you know, uh, making a new product as a developer because you're making it for other people who aren't developers. So how do we do a usability study? Uh, oh, OK. No. Oh, yeah, there you go. The order is wrong, but uh, OK. First, you decide on a task. It can be, you know, create a feedback form for your online classes and share it with your students. Then you find someone who has probably not used this, uh, you know, software before, and you ask them to, you know, do this task. And you might see that they're pausing somewhere, they're searching for a button, and you note all of these down. And, you know, they, if they ask any questions, note that down as well. And... Um, yeah, that's basically it, actually. If you do that for just like two to like four more people, you're done. And now you have a you know, nice little uh, document with all the pain points that you've really noticed that people are going through when they're using your um, uh, little flow. Uh, speaking of talking to people, surveys are also something that you can do to uh, get the opinions of what people are going to find useful. We also had a couple of surveys recently. I don't know if any of you recognize this. Um, uh, but depending on the goal of the survey, designing a survey is like super wide and it's its own thing. So let me just give you some general survey design tips that we try to follow. Um, uh, for example, keep it simple. So people are not going to answer a question that they don't uh, understand. So don't use technical jargon. Keep the language uncomplicated so that people know what your question means. 
uh, and keep it short. So uh, open-ended answers are tempting to use because it seems like a you know easy, easy way to get your answers, but most people just don't answer open-ended answers. Um, and it's really difficult for you to analyze as well. So maybe you can use a little radio button combination of like the most popular answers that you might expect. Uh, and third, keep it useful. Don't ask for information that you don't need. For example, we didn't ask for age or gender in any of our surveys because it's just not useful, even though it's like demographic um, you know, questions that you can just ask because it's asked in every survey, but we don't really need it. So uh, yeah, you can do surveys. And I think the last one is uh, gap analysis. So gap analysis is basically just a survey of uh, you know, what's happening in the, in the gender area of your product and seeing what your competitors are doing so that you know that you're not developing a feature that no one else has and people are actually going to find useful. So may have, uh, in this example, you know, let's go through an example that we literally did for collectives. So the competitors for collectives are like Confluence, Notion, you know, Coda, Etherpad, Cryptpad, a bunch of stuff. We just selected a few of them. Um, and then you take one of these competitors and see if they have any cool features. For example, Notion has page emojis, uh, header images, table of contents, all nice stuff. Uh, and then you note down if anyone else has these things. So clearly, table of contents is the most popular option over here. And then you just keep doing that until you have a bunch of options and boom, look at that. You know exactly what you need to do to get on par with every other product in the market. So uh, those are some things you can do to contribute to design. Um, you can join us on GitHub using the, um, you are on GitHub, obviously. We're an open source organization. Uh, we also have a design talk, I mean, a public channel where you can pop any small questions you have. And we also have a regular design call at 2 PM every Tuesday where you can ask to get your app reviewed. Uh, join us. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent, Nimisha. Thank you so much for your talk.